All right, good morning, everybody. It's Mr. Gravette, and I'm just dropping my second. Yes, I'm sitting on a uh, ab building ball. I don't know what they're called. Um, I'm dropping my second uh, video today. Um, just trying to keep in touch and trying to uh, level with you guys and hopefully giving you all some clarity on what's going on. Um, I'm down in the basement. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit cluttered, a little workout space. I've got kind of a, I don't know what we could call this, the Hall of, the hall of Awesomeness, the Hall of Champions, well, yeah, Hall of Champions, Hall of awesome, Awesomeness, whatever you want to call it. So I'll try to have a, a different background every few days to kind of uh, keep you guys engaged. Um, I hope that you're able to watch this. So uh, let's go ahead and get started, though. A uh, couple things. Number one. Google Classroom stuff. I've noticed we've got a handful of you guys that are, um, there's a handful of you all that are, uh, have done the assignments on Great Depression and World War One, and uh, that's fantastic. Uh, kudos to you guys, just a handful, and that's okay. Um, hold off on those assignments, all right? There will be announcements. If you haven't done them yet, uh, don't touch them. There will be announcements on those here after spring break, okay? So don't worry about those uh, those assignments, all right? Uh, I had somebody ask about the Russian Revolution packet in the World War I uh, unit. Don't do that one. So uh, just hold off. Hold off, okay? Um, kudos for those of y'all that got those, uh, got those assignments done already. Uh, it'll count. It'll count. You're fine. Uh, but hold off otherwise. Don't do anything else. Got it? Cool. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'm thirsty. I'm gonna grab my water real quick. Hang on. Remember this? I actually probably need to get a new one of these. This thing is probably filled with germs and everything, so it's gonna be a sad day when I gotta let this one go, but it's probably a good thing to get one or two a year, you yeah, know, just for the whole cleanliness of it. So, anywho. Uh, all right, um, let's see. Let's talk about the toilet paper crisis, all right? Couple th a few things to think about on this. Number one, y'all have been to the grocery stores, you've seen all the stuff on social media about everybody going out and buying their toilet paper, right? Good. Now, think back. Well, you can't think back because none of us were alive at that point in time. If uh, one thing that we're gonna learn in our Great Depression unit is about the stock market crash in 1929, all right? If history shows us anything, there's, a uh, when events like this take place, there's always a uh, an overreaction and an underreaction. You know, the people in the middle, people like you and me that are that are seeing it from both sides and you know acting like reasonable adults. Um, those people are uh, tend to be overlooked a lot, right? Uh, during the Civil War, uh, there were rich Southerners that thought this would be it would be fun to go watch the Union and the, the, the North and the South fight against one another, right? So all these rich white, rich, rich white landowners uh, went and had themselves a picnic uh, to watch one of the battles. And once they realized it was for real, they were like, holy cow, this is really happening. All right, so people didn't take the Civil War seriously, right? Um, so fast forward to... October of 1929, we're going to learn about this in our Great Depression unit, the stock market crash. Um, when the stock market crashed, uh, people killed themselves because their life savings was gone. Uh, they had no way to pay off their debts. Um, there were, and there were people running to the stores to get bread and whatever they needed because they felt like, uh, their, um, they felt like they were in trouble. So, uh, they felt like they... They needed to hoard, up, uh, to hoard everything, hoard up, because um, they thought that they thought the government was gonna, uh, or not the government, but they felt like the end was near. <laughs> they felt like the end was near. So, all right. Fast forward to maybe Pearl Harbor. I need to uh, look some more into this, but I'm willing to bet if it happened during 9/11, it probably happened during Pearl Harbor when the Japanese attacked. Um, when the Japanese attacked our, our naval base at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation that flies around when things like this are happening, right? Just like today, right? There's only 
so few people you can, or so few sources you can listen to and have with any credibility, okay? It's always been that way. Back in 1941, when Pearl Harbor got attacked, I'm willing to bet that there were uh, people that thought the Japanese were invading, and there, I bet there were people that ran to the stores to buy their guns, buy milk. I don't know if they went and bought toilet paper, but if they did, okay. Good for you all. Go for it. Um, so, let's see. And then, Cuban Missile Crisis. I've, been, I've compared this to the Cuban Missile Crisis, which we're going to learn about in our Cold War unit, uh, hopefully, if we're back in school by that point. Um, during the Cold War, uh, or during the Cold War, President Kennedy um, and uh, the Russian Premier Nikita Khrushchev were at odds. Uh, we're having a huge disagreement, and a lot of people say that's the closest we've ever gotten to um, to nuclear war. Um, what's interesting when you look back on that, there were people building bomb shelters in their homes. Do you think a lot of people were looking at them and judging them for overreacting? Of course, right? And then on the flip side, there were also people that were probably like, ah, the media's blowing it out of proportion, and uh, we were never close to nuclear war, just like you have a lot of people today freaking out, running out and buying toilet paper. And then on the other side, you've got people totally not taking this seriously at all, right? And then 9-11, right? I was alive for 9-11, and I can tell you on my way to a soccer game, that Tuesday night, um, we passed by a gas station in very rural America, and there was so much misinformation flying, and you know, the internet was in its early days. Um, there were a lot of news cable channels, right? But there was so much misinformation that was flying around out there that, um, that we, you know, it didn't surprise me when we saw um, a truck loading up four barrels of, of gas at a gas station. So, uh, people were paranoid. People were freaking out that day. So, here in 2020, when you see people on the internet buying all kinds of things of toilet paper, Mountain Dew, as we saw, there was a couple, I don't know if y'all caught that story, hand sanitizer, um, people are freaking out. And then on the other side, there are people saying that this shouldn't be taken seriously. And, you know, so it shouldn't surprise you at the conflict that we're seeing between both those sides. That always seems to happen when events like this take place. I don't know if I'm comparing this to 9-11. I don't know, in some ways you can, but I'm also not, you know, and I'm, I don't know if I'm comparing it to, uh, you know, I'm not saying the world is as close to as, as ending as we've, as we've ever thought, but when something like this takes place that alters our daily lives, you know, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, there were people debating, should we have our sporting events? Should we have uh, school open. People still went to school, by the way, and we've had, we'll have this conversation. Um, but people prepared for nuclear war the way we kind of prepared for a snow day. You know, hey, if there's no snow day tomorrow, test is still on Friday, 1960, uh, 1961. Hey, uh, if there's no, uh, if we don't get bombed, we're still having a test on Friday. So don't be, you shouldn't be surprised by any of this, okay? Don't allow yourself to be surprised. Don't allow your families to be surprised. Share, pass this along. Show your par parents this video, okay? So, please do. All right, um, so let's talk about, let's move on from that, and let's talk about trench warfare for a minute. Trench warfare is something that we're going to be looking at very closely uh, here in a couple weeks. I hope some of you all have got the opportunity to, got the opportunity to see 1917, uh, it actually comes out today on DVD. I know none of the stores are probably open to buy it. Uh, see if you can find it on Amazon. Maybe it comes on Netflix. I don't know. Um, I'm going to buy it today, and I'm probably going to watch it like a nerd. So um, see if you can find it. But it shows trench warfare the way it's meant to be shown. So, But one thing I need you to think about is think about all, all the, how limited you are uh, in, you know, with social distancing uh, you're probably running out of things to do. Um, maybe it, you've played every video game that you own twice, and it's time for a new one. Um, think about all the things, you know, think about the ways in which you're limited, all right? And oh, I'm having issues on this, on the, on, the, on the ball. All right, so think about the ways in which you're limited, and what I want you to do is in a couple weeks, so maybe write them down, write down your... your you know, your five things that you're doing to stay occupied. Playing on your phone, playing video games, sleeping. <laughs> um, 
going out in the backyard and uh, playing with the dog, um, things like that. Write those things down, all right? Because uh, you are looking at, in, a, in some ways, being like the trench warfare soldiers. Um, so you'll see those similarities here in a couple of weeks when we cover that unit, all right? So give that some thought. And on that note, guys, hold on to any signs that you see, any things that are going on. Take pictures of things that you're seeing um, in relation to the coronavirus. Um, this is historic. You are living history right now, okay? This is something that your kids and your grandkids are going to ask you about. Um, this is going to be uh, a time period that you remember like it was yesterday. You know, uh, we've, we've had this conversation, I've, I've told you all. 9-11 uh, is something that I feel was just like two days ago. You know, I remember exactly everything I was doing that day. All of the exact things that were said. And I think you're going to remember the conversations that you have with your family. Uh, and what you and how you and your family respond to this. So, and let's talk about your family for a minute. Um, be patient with them. All right? This is an adjustment for everybody. Nobody, I said this yesterday, nobody's going to respond the right way to this. Um, or they're going to look back and say, man, I wish I had responded that way to it. Uh, we hope something like this doesn't happen again. Um, and maybe when, if it, if it did, you would have a, a, a good way to respond to it. But right now, everybody's a rookie. Everybody's a rookie at this, all right? Which means mistakes are going to be made. Things are going to be said in your house that are going to upset you. Maybe they already have. Um, you're going to say things that upset other people um, because this is, going to, this is going to mess with us in our, our, uh, the way we function, you know? So you're going to do things that are a little out of character and uh, that's going to require a really kind of response. So, um, make sure that, uh, don't be too hard on you. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with your families. Okay. So, uh, last thing I need suggestions. Feel free to put in the comment box. I need suggestions, legal suggestions on what I can do with the toddler. All right. Luke is coming up on 20 months. Um, uh, he's all over the place. It's hard for me to get things done. He's still asleep right now. And that's why I'm having to get up and film these in the morning. Uh, otherwise, it'd be really difficult for me to do that. So a lot of stuff that you see me do in relation to our class is probably going to be early in the morning or late at night. Okay, don't think Mr. Gravatt's a weirdo that just never sleeps. No, I just have to take, I have to take the opportunities to get these things done for you guys so that um, I can pay attention and have fun with Luke um, during the day uh, when it's not nap time. We may go hiking today. Uh, we may go... I don't know what we're going to do. So we got to, I know we have to practice social distancing. So, um, so that's, that's what's up. All right. Yep. We went longer than five minutes. My bad. Um, I underestimated how much we were going to do, uh, talk about on this. Uh, tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's video, podcast, whatever you want to call it, briefing. Uh, we'll talk about, um, we'll talk a little bit more about maybe, uh, some of the ways in which uh, Governor Bashir is briefing us, uh, giving you guys some clarity on that. Uh, we'll talk about your jobs and how that has probably taken a hit. And um, for you seniors that I still have in class, I've got a message for you guys as well um, that I may drop that later on in the day. We'll see. That's It's an important message. I don't think... Um, I don't think uh, you should... Be feeling bad about the things that are taking place right now, seniors. We'll just say that. Um, give some thought and think about the hard work that you've done over the last four years. Um, you know, a lot of times graduation, prom, all those things are, are considered, and it is an accomplishment. Um, it is an important event. Um, but do you really need those things to, to tell you how hard you've worked over the last four years? All right, I need you to give that some thought. We'll talk more about it tomorrow, okay? So uh, stay sane, stay safe, stay clean, wash your hands, and um, hope you guys enjoyed my backdrop. These are great posters that I've, uh, I've accumulated over the last few years. Um, I'm really excited about them. My workouts today, this morning already before I filmed the video, with the soccer ball, got a new one yesterday, came in the mail from Amazon. They're still working. So last night I worked, uh, I worked my upper body with the ball, soccer ball, and uh, this morning I did uh, legs with the soccer ball, and I'm worn out already, and it is just past 6 o'clock.
So we're, we're past seven o'clock. Oh, we're past seven o'clock. My bad. So, all right, guys. Take it easy. I'll see you. Bye.